Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Very exciting day, look at this, it's Necromunda, also known as Necromunda. I know everybody else says Necromunda, but since I got the first edition set, here it is. I've been calling it Necromunda for some reason, so I'm going to stick with that. Ash Wastes, this is the new version of Necromunda, it's very exciting, it takes Necromunda out into the ash waste, the horrible wastelands out around the spires. It's a whole new environment to play Necromunda in. And I'm really excited to show it to you today. Now, uh, Games Workshop sent me this for free. Thank you, Games Workshop. They've been very supportive of my channel lately, and I really, really appreciate it. Now, this is a huge box, as you can see. There's a whole lot packed in here. What I'm going to do is take you through what's inside the box. Then we're going to have a look at the rules. There's some extra vehicle rules added to the original Necromunda rules. And then we're going to look at all the miniatures set up and built and on the uh, included terrain map. So you can see exactly what you get when it's all built. So let's get started having a look at the fantastic new set, Necromunda Ash Wastes. Well, check out this huge box. Now, of course, it's a bit brown and grim on the cover, but we're talking the Ash Wastes Ruthless Combat on a Nightmare World in the 41st Millennium. It's not a cheery place to be. Let's open it up and see what you get. Now, actually, these boxes, uh, even though they are so huge, they're really good for storing all your stuff because, you know, they're so big, you can put even store terrain in there if you want to. So, um, this isn't necessarily the order that you get when you open the box, because I've already opened it and had a look. But, first we have here a construction guide and some introductory gang lists. So, this is for constructing the two gangs. You've got an Ash Wastes Nomads gang, which has got these fantastic uh, mounted uh, bug things, like giant ticks, which I just absolutely love. Love to see more stuff like that, mutated creatures of the Ash Wastes. I really enjoy that. Then you've got an Orlock gang, or like road gang, um, and they have a couple of buggies, little buggies like this, which are nice to see, and uh, hopefully there'll be more vehicles in the future. Um, but I like this with the buggy with the guy flying from the back. And then you get these um, hab buildings and this terrain, which are really nice, and uh, I really like the look out of something a little bit different terrain-wise. These hab blocks that are on kind of stilts, and you can use these for all kinds of games, really. They're not so distinctively Games workshop in that you can't use them in other games. I'm planning to use these in The Drowned Earth as well, for example, because they um, yeah, I like the idea that the building is up on a stilt. Um, so in The Drowned Earth, it would be up above the water. Um, and they've got nice things like uh, these... Uh, what would you call that? A, um, a canopy sort of coming out. So they've got that kind of... Even a Star Wars feel as well. You could use it for Star Wars. Uh, various ramps and walkways and things as well. So there you go. And this is the what you can come up with. This configuration. So a couple of platforms, a couple of hab blocks, um, railways to on the side of the walkways, rails, I should say. Really nice terrain, anyway. And then uh, it was good to see this as well. You've got your gang lists in the back here. So abbreviated gang lists for the Orlock on Ash Waste and Nomad gangs included. Uh, so you've got all the characteristics. There's your Orlock gang, gang list, equipment list, Ash Wastes, special abilities. That's good. A little bit hard to read against this background. They've got black against this quite grey background, which has been a sort of style for the whole of Necromunda. And I think they should just back it off a little bit, the backs of the texture. It's a, it's a, it makes it just a little bit hard to read. But still, the type is relatively large, so it's not too bad. Weapons and war gear, stats there, personal equipment, weapon traits. There you go, a few special rules. So a nice little reference section section at the back, which is good to see. Uh, we've got this uh, play mat surface, which you can use. Um, it's just a paper surface. I'll, I'll open that in a moment and show you in a moment. Uh, then we've got plastic. Heaps and heaps of plastic. So this is all your terrain stuff. Some very nice looking surfaces here. Of course, this would go beautifully with all the existing Necromunda terrain. And that's the other advantage about buying, you know, your one-off thing like this. It's a very expensive purchase, this one box. But of course, if you want all the terrain in one go, you're going to be saving money. Um, it's going to be less expensive than buying all these individually because they will sell them individually. 
Um, another one of those. So if you bite the bullet once, you can end up with a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and, you know, if you're the kind of person who'd end up buying them individually, you might as well get it in one go, really. I do like these sails or, or um, canopies. I think that's really nice. These big, solid hab block um, buildings. Lots of nice detail there. They look great. Uh, this is your standard... Uh, sprue of barricades and things like that and turn marker uh, that little tentacle that comes out of a, a grating that's the same as the original Necromunda set another hab building more platforms ingeniously designed you can see there's a lot of repetition but when you put them together of course it all looks quite different now this bit's different uh, that has a sort of central grate area and there's very nice uh, walkways look they've even got all detail underneath the walkway as well, which is great. And uh, that looked really nice. Of course, the great thing about building this kind of terrain is because it's ash waste Necromunda stuff, you can really do it really roughly. Um, when you're painting it, you can just drip ink all over it and roughly dry brush it and put grime and uh, weathering powders on it. And it doesn't matter because it's not supposed to be pristine. In fact, it would be ridiculous if it was pristine for a game about Necromunda and the Ash Wastes. So that's all the terrain. Then you've got the sprues of the figures. These are the Ash Waste figures. And these guys are sort of carrying things on their back, big backpacks, uh, with all kinds of gear that they're toting around with them. Very nice. These look like the bugs, uh, the ticks, giant ticks, which you can ride. Lots of tiny detailed pieces. There's some building to do there. Uh, that's more Ash Waste Nomads. That's more giant ticks. This looks like buggies. We've got some wheels there. Some interesting guns, axle and everything. So they're made up of quite a few detailed pieces. Uh, these look like the Orlock Gangs. Here they are. Uh, another buggy sprue and another gang sprue. So, quite a lot of plastic there. Here it all is. Heaps and heaps of hobby time putting all that together. Uh, we've got a standard template set there. Uh, there's a sheet and oh look at all the stuff you can get for Necromunda these days wow so many extra books Whew. then look at this um, a truly spectacular hardcover book big hardcover book I'll look at that more closely in a moment you have got two reference sheets very handy to have it'll take me a little while to do a reference sheet for this game um, but uh, I will get started on it. A nice counter sheet. That's a standard Necromunda counter sheet. Nice and thick. And then finally, what have we got on the bottom? Well, a lot of bases. Large bases for the vehicles, I imagine. There's a plastic rain drawer. One of those, if you use those. Your Necromunda dice. And a stack of cards. So card-wise we have our usual um, gang stat cards. Quite a lot of them, a generous amount of those. I might actually use those. I, didn't, I haven't used those before. I usually use my own design, but there's so many of them here. I think you, know, you could probably use some of those. It's really nice. Then we've got some tactics, ash waste tactics. So one specific to the ash wastes, ramming speed, one with the road, gunk spill, It'll hold. Back to the fray. Always carry a spare. So that looks fun. And then you've got uh, some trade routes. Looks interesting. So trading bonuses and raiding bonuses. So that would be campaign related stuff. And then quite a large deck of road sections. So these all seem to be in different... Now there's different sections to the waste. There's deep wastes wild wastes and I think near wastes and there we go near wastes as well so they're kind of 
uh, dividing the ash wastes up into these three sections. Um, so these seem to be particular areas or sections of road that give you credits during the campaign um, and their locations and a nice bit of fluff text and everything. So this is a good way to keep track of your locations that you're exploiting trade routes during the campaign. There you go. Nice. Right, let's have a look through the Necromunda Ash Waste rule book, this lovely hardcover book. Now, I've been going through these rules quite closely because I've been making a rule summary and reference sheet for the game. And the good thing about this is, is that it updates all the Necromunda rules to this point. And in fact, if you go to the... Um, sorry to interrupt myself, but look at that lovely map, the Ash Waste there. There's the Primus Hive, and this is all the wasteland around it. So lots of uh, lovely places if you want to do campaigns um, and lots of material there for, for you know really getting into the background material if you want to. Um, yes, so I've been going through it and it's uh, been interesting because the rules have been updated a little bit. And if you go to the website, you can download a document which will update your Necromunda rules for you. Um, but this set also includes the vehicle rules, of course. And it's a really nice set of rules here because it just goes through the normal rules, but it just inserts sort of the extra ve vehicle rules as you go along and makes it, you know, part of the whole thing. Rather than putting it in a separate section, it's just built into the core rules. So, for example, here you've got your vision arcs for characters, and then here you've got vision arcs for vehicles which don't use a template, you just draw a sort of X through the middle of the figure to show the vision arcs. So uh, this is your, you know, basic stuff, your line of sight and all that kind of thing. Uh, all your, you know, basic rules. Then you've got status. Now, as you know in uh, Necromunda, if you've played it before, that a character or a figure, a model, character, figure, fighter, model, vehicle, <laughs> It's interesting actually, they uh, do get a bit more specific with that here in that everything is called a model and then you have fighters and then you have vehicles. So you've got fighter status and of course you can be active and engaged and prone and pinned and seriously injured and all that stuff as well. And then if you're a vehicle, you can either be mobile, which means that you're moving around and everything's fine, or you can be stationary and then if you're stationary you can be distalled, in other words you've stopped and you've got to restart or wrecked. In other words, you're stuffed. So they've got a status as well. You've got all the conditions in one place. Here's your basic conditions, but then all these other extra conditions, most of which apply just to fighters, not to vehicles as well. So that's all together in one section. And I've noticed that they've sort of moved things around a bit. So some things are now not in separate sections, but just under the conditions section, which is really good. Um, you've got special conditions for being mounted. Um, these are various things that apply, so that this is about sort of um, be, being able to ride by figures and, um, and shoot them. Um, the fact that you can't exist without your mount in the ash wastes, um, other things like that. So um, you don't become pinned when you get hit by a ranged attack. In, in fact, you could actually get knocked down and the mount could get knocked down. So extra rules just for being mounted there. Right, then we get on to the characteristics. So we've got a different profile for, um, whoops, that's weapons, sorry, vehicles, here we go. Uh, vehicles have a different profile in that they have the vehicle characteristics and the crew characteristics. And those cards that I showed you before, you've got fighter cards and vehicle cards. Um, so you can keep track of that. So your vehicle characteristic has three different toughness characteristics, front, side, and rear. It's also got hull points, a handling score and your save and then your crew have your normal sort of stats for ballistic skill, leadership, cool, willpower and intelligence. So there are your stats. These are the, uh, describe the two different cards that you get for them. Then there's a section on uh, getting your gang together and um, equipping it, doing all that kind of stuff. Your roster sheet for gangs. Then we get into the rules and this is pretty much the Necromunda rules just cleaned up, uh, all nice and clear now, and it's also added the vehicle rules through it as well. So uh, things aren't too different except when we get into the um, types of actions. 
and then we get into vehicle actions. Let's find them. Here we go, vehicle actions. So mobile vehicles can do a whole bunch of things. Uh, they can move normally, they can maneuver, move and shoot, fire all their weapons. Um, they can reload their weapons, aim, drift, which means they can sort of move sideways. They can ram things, they can go full throttle, so they go three times their move, but there's a chance they might wipe out if they do if they try and turn. So it's just a straight ahead full throttle. Basically turn on the nitrous and go <laughs> What a lovely day! And then station stationary vehicles have a certain number of things they can do. Jump start, turnover, freewheel, all just ways of getting started and getting moving again. And then stationary and wrecked vehicles can't do really much at all. Broken vehicles have to break for air. So that means they've got to do a move action and move very fast and, you know, get moving and try and escape. And then burnout is when their, <clears throat> the crew is panicked and they try and restart and that causes all kinds of problems. So a separate set of actions for vehicles there. Then you've got uh, the usual stuff, movement, and then, you know, vehicle impacts, collision damage, that kind of thing, running over fighters. Um, you can have head-on collisions and side-on collisions. You can collide with terrain. A lot of things are controlled by a loss of control test. So you can, if you do a test and you can lose control of the vehicle. Uh, more terrain stuff. This just describes the terrain in the set and how it applies to the terrain, terrain rules. You've got your shooting and uh, special shooting, your close combat. This is all normal. Resolving hits, inflicting damage, lasting injuries. That's all normal. And then you get into resolving hits against vehicles, which is slightly different. There's the facing of the, of the attack, because you have different uh, toughness values, depending where the attack comes from. Uh, the wound roll is normal, save, damage. Uh, you do, however, in this case, roll separate dice, and you have a location dice, and you have a hit dice. These are special dice. Here they are. So this is your location dice. You've got the body... Uh, the drive, the crew, the engine there, and then you have the type of hit, which is this one. So you have a glancing hit, a penetrating hit, or a catastrophic hit. That one. So if you roll these two dice together, you can go through these tables and you can see, okay, I hit it on the body and I did a penetrating hit and this is what happens. So nice little system there, and it gives lots of flavour to all the sort of hit results that you can have, depending on what you roll on these tables. Uh, some stuff about wrecked vehicles. There are out of action, special out of action results for injured crew uh, and lasting damage to the vehicle itself, uh, which of course affects things during a campaign. This is the loss of control test, which is a handling check basically, and then you can go swerving off and roll and the whole thing. So. Pretty comprehensive uh, rules for vehicles. Again, it's all a lot of extra rule load, but um, I think, especially, I've got, I'm going to summarise this, um, but I think that it's it's all in the same vein as the existing Necromunda rules, so there's not too much to, to handle. It's, it's fiddly like most Games Workshop games and a lot of dice rolling, but um, I think there's a lot of character to it as well in the level of detail. Um, there's recovering and restart now in the in the end phase. Uh, if you want to re um, recover your fighters, but then if, also if you want to restart your vehicles. And then there are, there are pre-battle sequences and a post-battle sequence, of course. So that's all that stuff. And then we should get on to oh, there's a bit of psychic power stuff, psychic duels, and then we get on to the campaign. So this is the Ash Waste campaign stuff. And uh, look, there's just so much stuff here. This is where you bring in those cards. So you've got road sections, uh, trade routes there, so and all the information on running a campaign. I have never run a Necromunda campaign. In fact, I don't think I've run a campaign in any miniatures game. I just have never had the time or the number of people dedicated to it. So I really admire people who do have the time to to do that kind of thing because it must be fantastic to run an interconnected series of games in that way. I wish I had the time to do it. Um, some special rules for fighting in the Ash Waste. Battlefield conditions, different regions. Um, again, you've got the near wastes, deep wastes and wild wastes. So different styles of things happening there. There are seasons on Necromunda, the season of flame and the season of ash. So that can affect things with the weather conditions. Um, 
you can play games where you have a rolling road, so you have road sections that sort of roll along, so you can have a, a that kind of thing, which is you know really interesting. I'd love to try that out. And then you've got a whole lot of scenarios just for ash wastes and that bring vehicles in and stuff like that. So um, here they go. Here all these different scenarios specifically made for vehicles. I'm really looking forward to seeing more vehicles come into this and, and really get this feel of, of vehicle battles. I think that'd be great fun. But look at all that stuff. Huge amount of choice there. And then you've got all the skills listed here. Some gang tactics. And then some lovely photos of the miniatures which I'm going to start painting very, very soon. So I can get you a battle report. So that is it, the fantastic hardcover book for Necromonda. And it's really nice to have this all in one book now, the updated rules plus the vehicle rules, all here in one book. Well, I've spent several evenings clipping out plastic, gluing it together with plastic glue, and look at the results. A spectacular post-apocalyptic wasteland battle board. It looks fantastic. And I've got to say, I'm really, really impressed with this set of terrain. Uh, these HAB buildings are just fantastic and I'm going to be using them for other games as well. They look great in the Drowned Earth, for example. Any sci-fi uh, setting, it's a really lovely set of terrain. You've got all these ramps. Now, there's a certain amount of modularity. It depends what you glue and what you don't glue. Of course, I've kept uh, things like ladders and everything unglued so I can change that around. Um, also, it's really nicely set up in that you have railings and stuff like that just sort of clip in. You can see? So they actually go under the thing and then just clip onto these rails. So very clever modular system. And of course the walkways and everything clip onto those rails as well as you can see here. So you can just lift them off. So you can set this up in all different configurations. I love these buildings. They're really good. You can leave the uh, lids unattached. So they come off very easily. You've got a fully detailed interior as well. So I definitely leave that lid unglued so you can get into the interior really well. You've got lovely touches like these awnings. These just clip again onto these railings. Um, what else have you got? There's these, uh, this ingenious system here. This kind of lowered walkway bit which clips onto the railings. Very clever design, these sort of pieces that come out on the top and the bottom. That should go there and line up. There you go. And uh, you can clip that onto there and then clip a railing to that. Put a ladder down, you've got an extra sort of level. to. And by doing this, it's ingenious because you can make the walkways uh, not be at too much of an angle. So figures will sit comfortably on them. There's more sort of side railings and things you can clip on. These little bits you can keep as well modular. You can take that off like that. I've magnetized the top of that because you can change this piece here. So I've just put a little magnet on it. There you go, a little rare earth magnet there, so that can magnetize. And I could put other things on the top there, but it's mainly because this piece in the middle here, this piece can uh, interchange with another piece. Now, the only thing that seems a little bit strange is you have two joints here. You've got this uh, cross join, like so, and then you've got this join, the square join. And so that limits you a little bit. I don't know why they didn't do the same cross join uh, throughout. Uh, would have given a little bit more flexibility. There might be some engineering reason for that. But what I've done is attach pieces like this whole bit here with the guy ropes and everything, but then here is unglued. So I can just take it off there. And that means I could put this HAB unit on a, on a smaller unit, uh, on a smaller stand, I mean. So it's at a lower height. So there are plenty of opportunities for changing your setup and getting different layouts. Now moving on to the miniatures, we've got the uh, Ash Nomads. And again, they're a, a faction that have been around for a long time uh, in earlier magazines and things. But it's great to see them uh, realised in the new Necromunda. And we've got these fantastic kind of giant tick riding mounted guys. There's four of those. They're really dynamic and look fantastic. Mutant creatures, really nice. Here's the other one with a long rifle. So putting these together is, is slightly tricky. Uh, the legs are quite spindly, so you want to make sure you have a, a really good uh, attachment at the bottom. I found a couple of these really tilted over to the side. That may have been part of the design, but I didn't like it. It tilted too much for me. So I got some putty and 
made sure that I attached these legs in a particular way that made them go a bit straighter. That was a little bit fiddly and you can see he's still on a bit of a lean but um, that's okay because it looks like he's, he's moving fast. So they need a little bit of tweaking, they were a little bit tricky. The nomads themselves are fantastic, they're super detailed, really so much detail in here. Um, the only problems I have building these ones, um, of course you've got things like this where there's a left arm, a right arm and a weapon. So you're gluing at the shoulder points, two shoulder points, and the point where the hand and the arm meet of the weapon. And uh, that's a little bit tricky because you've got three pieces that are all gluing at once. So um, I find that a little bit hard because the shoulder points can move around a little bit. There's, they're not locked into a particular key system. So uh, be careful with uh, building those. You might want to just put in a shoulder piece, let it dry, and then start attaching the other bits. That was a little bit fiddly, but spectacular models. And they've got these very distinctive high backpacks. One guy here with a big gun. You can see I've already painted some of these Necromunda pieces. I painted these from the Underhive set, so I've just swapped them over so I've got them already painted. These are these barricades and things like that. Here's some more of the Nomads. And you can see the level of detail is, is just crazy. There's <laughs> so much on it. I sometimes think actually Games Workshop are going a little bit crazy when it comes to the detail. They look great painted, but a strong silhouette is an important thing too. And there's just so many bits and bobs hanging off these things. It does give them a very distinctive feel, but it also makes it so busy. But uh, that's the job of a good painter to sort of simplify all this detail a little bit with a good paint scheme. Then we've got the Orlocks, uh, a nice set of figures. It feels like a slight opportunity lost here. I would have liked to see a brand new faction rather than just the Orlocks. Um, they've never been the most exciting faction for me. They're just kind of bikey gang guys, uh, a little bit standard. Um, it would have been nice to see something a little bit crazier, I think. Maybe a pack of mutants or something like that. But I'm sure that's all coming in the future as this range of Ashwais gangs are expanded. Still, they're lovely figures, and as you can see, the usual high quality. And then we have these two very nice buggies. Great to see vehicle rules. Now, of course, there are heaps of extra vehicle rules in this set, as we've uh, already had a look at. And uh, again, I would have liked to see a few more vehicles, but I suppose they're very large models, so expensive. We've only got the two. I mean, of course, we've got the mounted guys as well, but when it comes to mechanized vehicles, we've just got these two buggies, which look great. Um, but I'm sure this game will be even more distinctive if you introduce more vehicles. So I'm looking forward to putting more vehicles in. I might uh, use some of my old Gorka Morka vehicles. Uh, they could probably go well. I might have some other vehicles lying around too, which I can add to this game. So there you have it. I don't think you can deny that's a pretty amazing set of terrain. And as you can see, there's a paper mat in the background and it, it fills that quite comfortably. Uh, it's got a darker side on the other side, a kind of night. Uh, version of the scene, which is a nice option, but just brilliant terrain and you'll be using this forever. In fact, I've got the original Necromunda set and I'm still using that original paper and plastic terrain. I'm sure I'll be using this stuff for a long, long time to come. I think it's some of the most impressive terrain Games Workshop has done for a while. Uh, it's really nice to see something with a completely different feel and it suits the theme of the Ash Waste encampment perfectly. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at Necromunda, or Necromunda if you prefer, Ash Waste, and I think you'll agree it's a pretty spectacular set. Now, of course, it probably won't be cheap. I don't know what the retail price is yet, um, but as you can see, there is so much packed into this box, and if you bought all these individual terrain elements and gangs separately, of course, you'd be paying a lot more. So if you really want to get into Necromunda in the Ash Waste, I think it's probably a good thing to bite the bullet and just get it all in one go. Um, I'm going to be playing this for a long time to come, I can see, and I'm going to show you how it plays in the future once I've painted all this up and it looks as spectacular as it possibly can. I'll be doing a battle report uh, to show you how the new rules play and give you a taste of what it's like to fight in the terrible wastelands of the 41st millennium. Thanks again to Games Workshop for giving me the opportunity to show you the Ash Waste set. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, check out my hundreds and hundreds of other videos and go to the website at orderofgamers.com where you'll find 
over 400 rule summaries and references for your favorite fantastic thematic games. Also, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon and select all notifications so you get notifications of upcoming videos. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all those other things. And of course, I'm on Patreon if you choose to support the channel. Thank you very much. I will see you next time. Bye for now. Good gaming, everybody. I've got some ash wastes to paint. <laughs>